car that splits opinion right down the middle. That's mainly because of the way it looks. It's a crazy, extreme, wild looking car. And of course, that might not appeal to everyone. Let's be honest, you, you wouldn't call it pretty. You wouldn't call it gorgeous. But what you would call it is extraordinary, breathtaking, spectacular. You know, especially when you see one up close in the flesh. You know, it's all well and good looking at photos on an iPhone. And I was guilty of that myself. When I first saw photos of the Senna, I wasn't sure about it. But with these kind of cars, you need to see them up close. You know, walk around them, get a sense of the sheer size of that rear wing. You know, all the little details, the aerodynamics, the paintwork, and then understand that each part, each panel is there for a reason. You know, it has some sort of effect on the performance. So yes, it follows function over form, and it might just be the first hypercar that's ever done that. And that's what's so awesome about it. You know, McLaren are pushing the envelope. They're daring to be different, and we should embrace that. So let's talk some facts about the Senna. So there's gonna be 500 of these worldwide. You know, all 500 were sold out immediately. I believe that they're still being built. Not all of them have been delivered yet. Um, like the P1, there won't be a convertible. Um, but one of the most interesting facts about the Senna is they're built in left-hand drive and right-hand drive. You know, that's pretty unusual. You know, the McLaren P1 was only built in left-hand drive. You know, as are the vast majority of hypercars, you know, all the Halo Ferraris, the 918, the Carrera GT, uh, the Veyron, the Chiron, you know, they're all left-hand drive only. In, in fact, the only hypercars you can get in right-hand drive are the Paganis, the Koenigseggs. Um, you know, these cars are built in tiny numbers, most of them left-hand drive anyway. You've also got the 177 Aston Martin. Again, eight or nine cars right-hand drive in the world. You know, and all those cars I've mentioned, you know, they're two or three times the price of a Senna. So, you know, we're talking about a tiny number of right-hand drive hypercars in existence around the world. So for the UK market and other right-hand drive markets, this is a major factor. The rarity is one thing, but it also just makes the car so much more usable and practical driving on the correct side of the road. You know, if you've ever driven a left-hand drive car in London, you'll know what I mean. You know, it's not easy. You know, trying to go around left-hand corners when you're on the wrong side of the road, you know, roundabouts are more difficult, putting out junctions are harder, overtaking is more dangerous. You know, don't get me started on the toll booths and the car parks where you actually have to get out of the car, walk around to the ticket machine. You know, so given the choice in this country, you're going to choose right-hand drive every time. So the name, the Senna. We all know Ayrton Senna, one of the greatest F1 drivers of all time, if not the greatest. You know, he regularly wins polls, who's regarded as the most influential, who's the best driver. Um, you know, he won all three of his world championships with McLaren, so it's hugely significant that McLaren had chosen this car to be named after him. As far as names go, I don't think that can be topped. You know, names do carry weight in the collector's market. Um, the Ferrari Enzo will always be remembered as one of the greatest Ferraris of all time because it's named after the boss. McLaren was founded by Bruce McLaren. I'm not sure the McLaren Bruce has quite the same ring to it, or the McLaren Dennis for that matter. But hey, let's, let's not rule it out. So getting on to the important part for the petrol heads, the performance and the way it drives. So I've literally done a few miles up the road and back, pretty much at the speed limit, so I can't comment too much. Um, but we know the aim for McLaren was to build the ultimate road eagle track car with better performance than any McLaren's ever been built. So this is the second car from the ultimate series. The first one was the P1, which has now been out for five years. Um, you know, technology moves very quickly these days. You know, with that older hybrid tech out the window, McLaren have managed to reduce the weight by almost 200 kilograms, which is also 100 kilograms lighter than 720S, uh, which is pretty impressive considering the Senna actually looks like a much bigger car than the 720S to the visual eye. Just to fill you in on some of the stats, 789 brake horsepower, top speed 211 miles an hour, 0 to 62 in 2.8 seconds. So mind-blowingly quick which is exactly what we've come to expect from any McLaren. So it uses a twin turbo, four liter V8 engine, there's dual clutch transmission, rear wheel drive. This is the McLaren formula. What I've noticed though, from even driving it just at low speeds, it is a very different driving experience to the 720 or the 675 LT. It just feels a lot more raw. There's reduced soundproofing and much more rigid engine mount. So you can really feel that V8 grumble through the cabin. It does stir the emotions and just, adds to the sense of occasion. Put it into comfort mode and the gear shifts are silky smooth. I mean, it's super easy to drive and the throttle response is 
unbelievable. But look, this thing belongs on a track. You know, I think Evo magazine have called it the ultimate track driving experience. So you'd want to put the car into race mode, which lowers it by 50 millimeters. And because this car's got a soft rev limiter, it means you can access all of the power really easily uh, without over revving. All the McLarens, you know, whether it's a 570 or a 650S, they're all praised for the incisive handling and being so compliant on the road. And what's amazing about the Senna is that despite all this extra power, loads less weight, it managed to maintain all of those traits. You know, so much stability, drivability. The other thing journalists go on about is the insane stopping power of this car. Apparently there's never been a two-seater car which can brake like this. You know, I haven't tried it, but it's meant to be a pretty addictive feeling going from a super high speed, slamming on the brakes, and just comes to a halt so steadily. Autocar Magazine said it was like driving into a large container of treacle, which I thought was quite a good way of putting it. Looking inside the car, you've got these mad fixed back carbon fiber seats, which only weigh eight kilograms, which is nothing really. You can actually spec these seats in the 600 LT. What is unique to the center is the central tunnel buttons actually move with the driver's seat. Also different is the start button, window controls, and the door release are all on the roof, which I think is a, is a real trademark of this car. So it brings over quite a bit from the 720S. Firstly, the fully carbon fiber monocage three tub. So there's exposed carbon fiber everywhere. It's also got all the digital instruments, the folding display from the 720S. Um, there's track telemetry as expected. Uh, so recording lap times, getting all sorts of data up on the infotainment screens is, is super easy and you know, really useful. You also can get forward and rear facing cameras where you can actually record footage. Um, so you can watch some of your laps back. One of the coolest options you can get on the center is the Gorilla Glass, where you can literally see through the bottom of the door, which is not only useful for parking, but also on the track means you can see the apex of the corners. I imagine it just makes you feel way more connected to the track. It gives you a greater sense of speed. In terms of other options you can get on the car, so the center comes as standard with matte carbon fiber, but through MSO, McLaren Special Operations, you can specify gloss carbon, like the silver car, um, that's an extra 15,000 um, pounds. You can also get the carbon fiber roof section. That's another 25,000 pounds. Both these two cars have got MSO paint, which is a nine and a half grand option. Um, but you can really go crazy at MSO with personalization and just making your car bespoke if you choose. The red car here is called MSO Norello Red. It's real deep metallic red, almost black. You know, it's really classy paint. It comes to life under the sun. And you've got the silver, which is a heritage paint which shows off the lines, the contrast of the carbon, the Gorilla Glass, much better. So the car cost new base price £750,000. That's before any options, any paint, any MSO bits. So most cars will list about hundred grand more than that. Um, now you obviously had to be chosen by McLaren to get one of these and have a record of buying previous McLarens. But with only seven or eight years to go by, there's not a huge backlog of cars you could have bought uh, like there is with Ferrari. Um, so you probably could have got one if you bought a 675 and a 720S, for example. We are getting asked quite often on social media why there's been quite a lot of centers flipped already um, and why just some first owners aren't hanging on to them. I mean, firstly, unless you're a P1 owner, then these people who have had 720s and 675s, you know, the center's a big step up in money. You know, so when they've got offered a slot, some people might have just taken that opportunity knowing they could flip it for a premium. So unfortunately, yes, not the most loyal to McLaren, but a pretty shrewd move financially, if you ask me. I know there are some people who get frustrated by this for obvious reasons, and I do understand, but it is the way it is. It's the way the world works. It's never gonna change. And especially of what we're finding more and more recently is that people are getting fed up of being told what to do by manufacturers, main dealers, what they can, what they can't do with their cars, you know, where they can sell it, when they can sell it. You know, the people that can afford these cars generally like to do what they want and not to be told off like they're back at school. You know, that's one of the reasons why people don't bother playing this main dealer game and are happy just to pay it over list for cars. It means they can do what they want with it and not have to worry about the consequences. It's a much greater sense of freedom and generally that's how millionaires and billionaires like to lead their lives. Besides, the premiums on the center at the moment, they're not crazy. You know, we're not talking LaFerraris where they're more than double the price. Um, you know, we're talking about 100,000, 200,000 pounds over list, which I know to most people is a hell of a lot of money. Um, but for a hypercar and the people that can actually afford the center, it's pretty reasonable. Most hypercars these days cost two million pounds plus. 
Um, so in some ways, this is a bargain. You know, they're never going to make another Senna, you know, other than a Senna GTR, which will be way more expensive, track only. Um, so this is a great opportunity to buy a very special right-hand drive hypercar you know, and not have to spend over a million pounds. How will they perform in the future? It's hard to tell. P1 went up lots in value, then it came back down. Um, but they're still more than list price today, and that's for an out-of-warranty car with plenty of miles on it. Old technology, of course. So I can see the Senna doing well over the next couple of years. Right now, they're so fresh out, so it can take a little while for people to sort of think that prices have settled. But as I've said before, like there isn't much competition in this price range. You know, you're about a quarter of a million pound less than a 918 Spider or a P1. Um, you're closer to something like an F12 TDF, um, which isn't a hypercar. On performance, the Senna's probably the best car in the world right now. You know, I know the Valkyrie and the Project One, which come out later this year, will have something to say about that. But don't be surprised when they're on the market, they'll be you know, twice or triple the amount of the Senna. Just a few more thoughts on McLaren as a brand. As I know in our Holy Trinity video, there were some things that I was critical of them about. What is apparent is that they're improving their cars every year. You know, they're not resting on their laurels, they're pushing the envelope and breaking boundaries. Yes, they're building a lot of models, Yes, there are niggling problems with reliability or build quality, but when it comes to performance and technology, I think they're now way in front of Ferrari. You know, let's be honest, Ferrari aren't doing anything that game-changing at the moment. You know, I know there are a lot of our clients, or some of our clients, who have had bad experiences with McLaren, you know, whether it was the, the 12C, which had all sorts of issues, um, or the huge depreciation of the 570 or 720S over last year. You would be silly to write them off and not give them another chance because you know, I think McLaren have got an amazing future ahead of them. You know, they haven't been building these cars for very long, but do remember they've got an incredible racing history. You know, they've got the ultimate feather in their cap, McLaren F1, which is in the last 25 years the most important car. You know, that alone stands them in very good stead. What else is so great? It's a British brand. You know, they're constantly, so being a technology centre, they're constantly building new tech but naturally they're gonna find ways of improving the cars. You know, I know they're building electric powertrains, you know, the cars are winning awards left, right and center. Uh, you know, McLaren are a cutting edge company and I think, you know, the future for them actually looks pretty damn good. So back to the Senna, we currently have two for sale. Feel free to come down and see them. You know, we've got them in our showroom, physical cars ready to be bought and driven away today. Thanks for watching guys, you know, we'd love to hear your comments on the video below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.